being able to be nimble and quick is going to help you speedily and efficiently, speedily, not a real word, handle these logarithms. So let's go through and work with a couple of properties of logarithms. Okay, which properties are we gonna work with today? Some properties of logarithms. The log of a product is the sum of the logs. Yeah. The log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. Yeah. And log of the argument to the r power is r times the log of the argument. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm up here. Uh huh. I'm taking a look at this man. I see that I got a log of a product. A log of a product. And we know the log of a product is the sum of the log. So this is the log of 1,000 plus the log of x. Okay, we can go more. We can go more. Sure. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the log of 10, 1, 2, 3, to the third plus log x. Now this is one of our basic properties of logs. Special logs. Yeah. Um, if there's no base written, it's log base 10. Your common logarithm. We're on a base 10 system. The natural log, ln, log natural, is really log base e of x. Okay, so I see I can simplify that guy. This is gonna be, this is gonna be three plus log x. Okay, and then here, that gets the box and the flower, which takes us down to our next example. That's the log of a quotient. We know the log of a quotient is gonna be the difference of the logs, the natural log of e to the second power minus the natural log of five. You may be wondering which one gets the minus sign. The one in the denominator gets the minus sign. And there are several other different manipulations of this property. Oh no! That's one of our special logs. Special logs? Yeah. Um, if there's no base written, it's log base 10. Your common logarithm, we're on a base 10 system. The natural log, ln, log natural, is really log base e of x. And we're gonna use one of our special log properties. Some general properties of logarithms. Log base b of one is zero every single time. Log base b of b is one every single time. Log base b of b to the x is x every single time. Log base b, ah, b to the log base b of x is x every single time. Okay, yes. So then I can either bring that two down or I can see that that's log base e of e to the two, which is gonna be two minus the natural log of five. Okay, and then, And we're down to the next one. Uh-huh. Oh, boy. This one needs some massage and some manipulation. This is the natural log of x to the one-fifth. Okay. So now I can use one of my special properties and bring that right on down front. Okay. So then this is one-fifth the natural log of x. And you do. You may be asking, how do I know when I've simplified it as far as I can? Well, expanded it as far as I can. Here, when we're expanding these logarithms, you know that they're as far as they can go. If in the argument of the logarithm, you have nothing being squared, cubed, nothing raised to a power, no products, and no quotients, either variables or constants in there. Now I'm back up here. Let's try some of the harder ones. All right, some of you guys are like, at the level where you're like, that's gonna be two. Log base b of x plus log base b of y minus two log base b of z. But everybody else, I don't think you're quite there yet. Uh-huh. Yeah, you might be a professional. 
but I don't know. Here, what I want to do is go step by step. What do you first want to do? Why don't we break up that quotient? This is going to be log base b of x squared y, okay, minus log base b of z squared. Here I'm using the log of a quotient as the difference of the logs. Here I see I have a product. Oh yeah, so I can break that one up further. Log base b of x squared. Because the log of the product is the sum of the logs. Plus log base b of y. Okay, let's just bring that right on down for now. Log base b of z squared. Okay. Finish him. Yeah, here I'm going to use that property where if I have my argument raised to a power, I can bring it down front. 2 log base b of x plus log base b of y minus 2 log base b of z. And then what? And a flower. Let's take a look at this next one. This next one's a big stuff. Big stuff. No whammies. Stop. Rewrite this to the one-fifth power. Log base two of x, y to the fourth over 16. Uh-huh. To the one-fifth. Okay. Now what do you want to do? Do you want to bring that down front or put it inside? Either's good. Either will work. I'm going to bring it on down front. So then I'm going to have one-fifth of log base 2 of x, y to the 4th over 16. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm bringing it right back over here. Taking a look at that. I have the 1 -fifth outside, and I'm going to want to use parentheses so that I know that it's 1 -fifth of the expansion of that logarithm. Okay, so now I'm going to use the difference there. Log base 2 of x, y to the 4th, minus log base 2 of 16. Sure. I'm going to keep on keeping on. Here I see I have a product. Mm, yeah. So then, this is going to be 1 -fifth the quantity log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of y to the 4th minus log base 2, wait for it, wait for it, 2 to the 4th. Okay, we're really seeing some logarithm action on this one. Yeah, okay. So here we go, we're almost done. We have a fifth of log. What happened to my L? There it is, two X. Uh-huh, now I see I can bring that four down front. Plus four log base two of Y. Okay, minus, wait for it. That's one of my special product properties. Log base two of two of four is four. Sure, but wait, there's more. Finish him. Distribute in that one fifth. So then, I have one fifth log base two of x plus four fifths log base two of y minus four fifths. And then what? You know, a box and a firecracker. Yes. <laughs> What's cracking?